What's up, everybody? Today I'm going to talk about uh, quantifying phenotypic age. Uh, I posted a video earlier on phenotypic age, which is also known as uh, biological age. Um, it's a measure of disease risk and risk of death for all causes. So uh, let's have a look at my data. So uh, a couple days ago, I, I got the uh, standard blood chemistry screen, screen, also known as the CBC, and uh, C-reactive protein measured, and that's basically all you need to, uh, to calculate your biological age. So um, what we can see is I had uh, high levels of albumin, which are found in biological youth, so that's good news. Higher than expected creatinine, bad news. Uh, higher than expected glucose, also bad news. <laughs> The trend continues higher than average C-reactive protein. Uh, stellar levels of uh, lymphocyte percentage, pretty good uh, mean uh, red blood cell volume and red cell distribution width, uh, biological youth values for alkaline phosphatase, and higher than average, my average values for white blood cells. My average is about four and a half, somewhere in that range. So with a collection of those variables results in a phenotypic age of about 34 years, which isn't bad considering that my chronological age is 47, so I'm about 13 years younger than my chronological age. So one blood test is nice, but I've also, as, as this, uh, this slide shows, I've also measured uh, uh, my phenotypic age uh, two other times during the year, so we can get a more complete picture of my uh, uh, aging processes um, with more data. So compared to my March uh, measurement, my phenotypic age was significantly younger, uh, about two two and a third years younger than in June. And <clears throat> I also me measured in February, which was a little bit worse uh, than the March measurement, but also better than the June measurement at 32.75 years. So I just want to highlight that, um, you know, one blood test is nice, but from my experience, and I've, I've have about 25 blood test measurements over the past five years, uh, six times a year is important for seeing your own trends in the data. And what I mean by that is, Every February, in that range, January, February, mid-February, I uh, get some kind of a respiratory infection. Uh, up until this year, it was likely influenza. Uh, I thought I had coronavirus it, at, at exactly, pretty close to exactly this time in February. The antibody test, uh, though, came up negative, so I didn't have it. So uh, I had a cough and no fever, but uh, nonetheless, that increased my white blood cells to higher than uh, average values for me, as I mentioned earlier, around 4.5 is, is uh, my average for white blood cells, uh, at, thereby resulting in, in what I thought was a higher than expected phenotypic age. Now, once I recovered from that a month later, uh, as expected, the white blood cells came down and uh, my blood test variables improved enough to reduce my phenotypic age by a little more than a year. Now, in going to the June measurement, I didn't have a respiratory infection, but pot potentially worse. And I say that with all respect to people who do have coronavirus. But for me, every year in June and July, I'm afflicted with hay fever. And this is, uh, you know, brought on by bouts of sneezing and uh, stuffy nose, uh, uh, you know, red itchy eyes. It's awful. Uh, and again, I, I don't want to diminish coronavirus people who have that. This I'll, I'll survive uh, hay fever. But in terms of my biological age, it, it doesn't, it clearly doesn't positively impact it. And just as, to highlight, um, my C-reactive protein, which was 0.53 milligrams per liter in this measurement in June, it's usually about half that in measurements that are not in June. And we'll see that data uh, in a couple more slides. So um, if I only measured in, you know, say March, I would miss the June trends. And because I'm measuring every June or almost every June, uh, I should be able to come up with uh, better strategies, whether it's dietary or other strategies, to improve my uh, phenotypic age going forward because I'm tracking it. Um, okay, so uh, based on these three blood tests so far in 2020, uh, my average phenotypic age is 32.78 years, which again is 14 plus years younger than my chronological age. Not bad. What about 2019 data? So, um, Although I said I have 25 blood test uh, results for the past over the past five years, I've only included CRP since about uh, one, once in 2018 and twice in 2019. All my blood test measurements going forward are going to include C-reactive protein, so I should be able to measure um, you know, phenotypic age in every blood test going forward. So in September and, and late October of last year, I measured twice. Um, in September, my phenotypic age was 
about 35 and a half. And then I improved that in October to about 31.3. Uh, now, how, how, that's a big drop. How did I do it? Well, um, I started cutting my calories up until September of last, last year. I was not calorie restricted at all. My average calorie intake was somewhere in the 27 to 2800 range. Um, I track my calories every day with a food scale, so that's pretty close to accurate. Um, so starting in September, I then started cutting my calories and then um, you know, I cut them by about two to 300 a day. Uh, I think my average was somewhere around 2550. Uh, and that reduction was, sig you know, was able to um, uh, reduce my phenotypic age significantly. Now, you know, this is 2019 versus 2020 on the previous slide, but uh, I, I don't have any data yet for the second half of this year, whereas I didn't have any data for the first half of last year. So you could make the argument that these, these data, these two data points, in addition to my 2020 data, are a full year of quantifying phenotypic or biological age. And if, if you compare them, they're pretty similar. Um, the average, my average phenotypic age in 2019 was uh, 33.44 years, whereas this year so far it's 32.78. So if you, you know, take the average of those values, it's around 33 years, still 14 years younger than my chronological age. So what about 2018? So I mentioned that I, I did have measurement, uh, uh, I did have CRP measured in 2018. And uh, as I mentioned, hay fever uh, is, is terrible for me. And that's reflected, uh, you know, biochemically, you can see my C-reactive protein at 0 0.67, which again is about double my uh, average value that does not include June measurements. So six non-June measurements versus two June measurements, the June measurements I have double CRP than I do the rest of the times during the year. Um, now, the importance of that is further illustrated by, you know, the hay fever for me is pretty bad in June and uh, early July, and then it starts to fade, um, which is ridiculous because it seems like it takes me two months to adapt to, you know, the grass and pollen in the air, which is incredibly slow for, an, you know, an immune, uh, a to, to build immune tolerance. Uh, nonetheless, that's two months out of every year that I have approximately double the uh, C-reactive protein levels that I have for the rest of the year. Now, over 60 years, that's one in six years or 10 in 60 years that I would have double than normal, than my normal inflammation. So for 10 of the next 60 years, just based on my June and July um, CRP data, even though I didn't show July data, I haven't measured that yet, but I'm assuming that my July CRP data is, is um, elevated too based on my symptoms. Um, that's, that's 10 years out of 60, which is a, a significant amount of time. So obviously I'm, uh, you know, interested in doing whatever I can do to reduce my C-reactive protein during my periods of hay fever, uh, so that I can live, uh, you know, with lower levels of inflammation during that period, potentially further enhancing my, you know, my measures of health, including, uh, phenotypic age. So. Two years ago, my phenotypic age, based on my measurements, my, va my variables, blood test uh, variables, was 34 and a half. Now, if you remember, in 2019, it was less than that, 33.4 and 32.8. So one could make the argument that I've actually reduced my biological age by about a year and a half going from 2018. The other interesting measure measurement is that comparing June 2018 versus June 2020, so two full years have passed, but yet... I've, I've been able to reduce my phenotypic age by half a year, although two years of chronological age have passed. So I'd say that I'm on the right track in terms of improving my year over year or year, you know, biannual um, June measurements. Uh, and one component of that is reduced C-reactive protein. Uh, just as a last uh, aside here, I didn't go over it in the earlier slides, but um, there, all, all is not perfect here. And there is room, definite room for improvement. As you can see, my glucose levels here in, the, in my uh, measurement earlier this week were at 99 milligrams per deciliter. And uh, since 2018, I have, uh, you know, a bunch of measurements that are in the 90s, and that's going in the wrong direction. Uh, I have a video showing um, data that uh, values for blood glucose between uh, 80 and 94 milligrams per deciliter are associated with reduced all-cause mortality risk and values closer to 80 are found in biological youth and they increase during aging. So my glucose levels are going in the wrong direction. Um, similarly, my creatinine levels have been consistently 
uh, going towards one or higher, which translates into a reduction in kidney function uh, over the past uh, two years or so. So uh, I'm not going to go into it in this video, but in uh, upcoming videos, I'm going to look at uh, associations between my diet with my uh, creatinine and glu glucose levels, and then make interventions to potentially reduce my glucose levels and, and creatinine levels, uh, which should re further reduce my phenotypic age. So stay tuned for that. Um, for more info, you can visit my website. And if you've got questions or comments, here are all the places that you can find me online. That's all I've got. Have a great day.